Okay, so we are live. It is uh, early Saturday morning, Friday night, 1.50 a.m., and I'm going to go over the Mindy West case again, um, but this time I'm going to focus a little bit more on Rosalie Miller, uh, who was found a year before her. Um, so uh, I'll be back in about uh, 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds, once I get stuff uh, pulled up and be back shortly. Okay, so I can't find it. Um, let's see here. So I'll have to do this for now. Okay, so uh, for those who've been following. Most of what I've been doing is uh, covering a cold case that uh, has been cold since uh, two, uh, 1998 regarding a Mindy West who was um, found out alive in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, off of Hughes Road um, from uh, strangulation. And the year before that, a woman by the name of Rosalie Miller, and I'll pull that up shortly here, it was found a town over in Auburn, New Hampshire, with the same type of unaliving. So let's share that. Oops. So the reason why I'm following this is uh, when I knew Mindy West pretty good. Um, well, not pretty good, but I knew her because we grew up in the same town, Londonderry. And um, 
I ran across it. I had heard about a case years ago, but I didn't think anything of it. Now I'm in true crime. I'm trying to um, work on this, but there's not a lot of um, information, and I'm trying to um, gather as much information as I can. What I want to do now is go here. And uh, let's see here. Let's go here to Facebook. On my YouTube, I mean, I'm sorry, Facebook. This is where you are. Full case. So she's about um, she's a, she was a little older, but same. Um, type of uh, homicide. She was from Manchester as well. Uh, so let me get out of here. And... So she was uh, found in 1997. Stop it right there because I'm going to pull out um, a map here. Okay, so this is um, Auburn, New Hampshire. I'm going to try to bring this up a little bit here for you. So <clears throat> this is Manchester here. And this is the major highway, uh, the two, uh, 93. This goes all the way through. This is the mall in New Hampshire here. So, Bindi West was basically found kind of in here somewhere. And, um,
it's not far from Auburn. So this is Auburn here. If you follow this road, I believe this is Auburn Road here. This is a uh, Londonary part of Londonary here. And then it turns into Manchester. And then it gets right back to the Mall of New Hampshire. So this is Mammoth Road here. So basically Auburn, Manchester here. So they're both pretty pretty close to each other. This is um, Lake uh, Mass. Uh, this is a Crystal Lake Park here. So this is Lake Mesa be secure. Back it up for your position. So as you can see, I've uh, whoever this is, I've kind of um, Facebook these people because I want to know if it's uh, ever been established that there could be a connection between this and the Mindy West case. But um, nothing's nothing's ever um, guaranteed. It could be completely separate. But. Uh, go now to um, the map again. a little bit better here so this is the mall of here so there's crystal lake here so if you keep following crystal lake uh, you can zoom in a little bit more here Okay, this is what I want. Okay, 
Okay, so if you follow this down, this is Auburn, this is Bodwell Road here. And then it turns into, once you get uh, into uh, London area, it turns into Old Dairy Road. And then you come all the way down here. This shoots you back towards London area, and this will shoot you out towards Auburn. So this is a four way stop sign here. You go out in here, and this is kind of like a used to be a dirt road. There used to be a dump in here. There used to go motorcycle riding in here. There's sand pits down here. It used to be a super fun site because this is where they used to dump all their hazardous waste in here. Um, but if you go out, this is, this is the uh, Whispering Pines Trailer Park, and this is Auburn right in here. And this is the Turnpike right here, London Area Turnpike. So she was found in through here somewhere. This corner store out here, too. But if you look, this isn't, this is maybe 10 miles tops till you get to. Um, <clears throat> where um, Mindy West was found, right, which is right in here. This, this is Hughes Road right here. Right in here, there's a, there's a church over in here somewhere. This is the back way of Fallon's Furniture. You can go this way too. So this is this is Mammoth Road here, 28, and then this this is Bodwell Road here. And in Manchester again, it's called Bodwell Road, and it turns into Londonbury over here. Now, strangely enough. If you keep going here down this road here into Old Derry Road into London Derry, um, um, Mindy West lived right on this road, Old Derry Road. This is this must be. Uh, She lived right. This is, yeah, this this is um, Longwood Road here, I think. So she lived right in here somewhere. And then we lived over in here. <clears throat> so she lived right down the street from us. This is this must be Longwood. And this is the shortcut if you want to go right to Auburn Road. This comes out to um uh Basically, 28 again. This is the back side of it. So she lived. She lived right in here. I wonder if I can find. Yeah, that's Lance Ave. Old Derry Road. So she lived right in here. Mindy West grew up right in here. It's a gray house. So this is Lance Ave. And if you go out here. There's Old Dairy Road. If you go this way here, the gray house here. I don't know if it's still gray. It might be. Yep, right there. There it is. I believe. This is where they lived. So 
I hope I'm not making you dizzy here. Oops. Yeah. Anyway, it's just that's where she lives right here. So if you follow this road all the way up, uh, you're going, I believe you're going. East. And if you keep going up this road, you're going to turn a bend here, and you're going to go up a hill, and then to a flat, and then down the hill. That's where we live. It was on the same bus, but that that was her house right there. That's what she grew up in, right there. I don't know if they still live there, but uh, we lived on 82. So that was her house. That was Mindy West's house. So that's, I don't know where Rosalind, Rosalie grew up, but okay, so let's stop sharing that. So this is what I want to get to here. This is um, what I've, back in 2008, um, they, um, they were looking into a character from uh, Worcester, Mass. And this is, um, This is what I was able to pull up from that. But 2008 is a long time ago, so. So in this article, I found um, the New Hampshire police are exploring possible links between the man named a person of interest in a string of unsolved area murders in the late in the late 90s slings and the late 90s slings of two new hampshire sex workers i don't like to say prostitutes so um, manchester detectives contacted worcester county D da uh joseph d early's office in the past week about an alex f screw uh sorry if i screw this name up sesney 38 of berlin I should look that up. And there are two unsolved murders, said Connolly. And they were put in touch with the assigned DA up there in um, Worcester County. So the New Hampshire uni Union leader identified the two victims as Rosalie Miller and Mindy West. So at one point they were looking into both of these cases being tied to this guy here. I'll have to contact the union leader. So they wanted to talk to this guy about the unaliving of several uh, Worcester, Massachusetts sex workers. And these people, these women were found between 2003 and 2004. He was, uh, this guy here was eventually convicted of one unaliving. So they wanted to speak to him also about the unaliving of Carmen Rudy. I'll pull that up in a second. Betsyta Montavo and Daniela Torres. All in the same kind of time span. So that's about five years. So this is the guy. Here that I should contact. I have limited articles remaining.
so that's that's why I'm looking into this. But um, let's stop this here. That was from the Metro West Daily News. But what I want to do is. Um, here this has got to be the most bizarre name I've ever heard of in my life I'd covered this earlier in an earlier live here, but uh, this is the guy here. That's the guy there. He's serving time. I, I pulled up his uh, my case file in Massachusetts and I found him. Um, they had a name from the Maine Hillsman murderer or something. This is September 16, 2008. So this was a long time ago. He, I believe he got, he got away with the uh, SA on this person because of a, of a um, stipulation in the defense lawyers got him off on that. So they both were into drugs. Crack cocaine was the, the um, drug of the day back then. go to a um Okay, here we go. This is what I wanted to show people here. Okay. So let's get rid of this. And I'm going to pull up this. Okay, so... Um, these are the people here. These are the victims. You have Linada Oliveira. Oliveira. She was found in 2007. Uh, Wendy A. Morello, 2004, location York, Maine. Uh, Daniela Torres, March 3rd, 2004, near I-290. 
Hudson Mass. I believe that's Hudson Mass. This is Marlboro Mass. I-290. Um, Beseda Montavo. And then Carmen Ruby. But if you look at these, all of these images here, they're all fairly similar. Um, <clears throat> let's visit this because I don't know who this is. This is the Telegraph and Gazette. Telegram and Gazette from, I believe this is um, Worcester, Mass. So this is what they called him, the Woodsman. Not saying he's connected to any of these, but they were looking into this. So, so he was convicted of the murder of Teresa K. Stone, 39-year-old woman. Strangulation by ligature. So it's the same MO. So that's what I wanted to show everybody. Um, and strangely enough, um, if you go back to um, Strangely enough, uh, if you look at these time frames, and if you throw the stone over to the 1997 and 1998, that's seven years time frame. This one's a little bit more. It's possible. That's all I'm saying. But again, uh, trying to find out some more information. But off of this here, um, don't forget um, the Mara Murray case because Mara Murray. Probably the most famous uh, true crime case in history. Mara Murray um, disappeared two thousand and four, February ninth, two thousand and four, after she crashed her car. So she just vanished in thin air. But if you look at the time framing, 2004, and you go back to the other cases, um, it's in the time frame. So I'm going to do a little bit more deep diving into this um, because I think it's definitely uh, a possibility. Because if I pull the map back up, um, all of these cases here are geographically um, Since I can't type tonight.
So if you look at this map of New England, this is Route 90, this is Highway 93. This is a connector here to everybody. I mean, most people on the western side of the state, Vermont and stuff in New York, will take 91, but 93 uh, goes all the way up to the White Mountain National Forest town. You hit Concord, you hit Manchester, you hit Nashua, Lowell. You just keep going through. So everything that happened, most of all of these things that happened, um, and you can connect to 95 too. So Maine's in play, Vermont's in play. Uh, and I believe Mara Murray was found somewhere over in um, Woodsville, 112. So if you remember this map here, and this map, where am I? Right here. This is Lincoln, Woodstock, Thornton, Campton, um, Plymouth, Hampton. Keep going down, Sanberton, Tilton, Franklin. Okay, this is 93. Right here. So if she decided, Mara Murray decided, hey, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm going to get out of here and then the thumb down. It's possible. So that's that. But something I'm looking into, not sure about it yet, but I got feelers out, got people looking at it. And, um, uh, but I definitely think this guy here, um, Alex Kuzny, might be involved in at least some of these. And they were looking into it, so I haven't lost my brains. Um, that was back in 2008. So, um, you know, that's me. So uh, give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to take a little break and then maybe we'll get back into um, the news of the week. All right. I'll be right back. Actually, let's um, do some music here. Be right back.
All right, we're back. All right, let's uh, get out of here.
So uh, I needed some acoustic uh, audio for my uh, streams and contacted my cousin and I said, hey, uh, can I use some of your shit? So he said, yes. So I said, okay, let's do that. So this is who this is. Everybody knows what it is, right? It's only got one control on it, right? This mine is different. Mine has multiple tone settings on this control. It's got one gain control, okay? and, and, and this this is the one you use. Know. That's taking that from the straight gain master. So when I was a kid, uh, I, I really wanted to be a musician. So um, these guys lived down in uh, Revere, Massachusetts. So I used to go down there and listen to this shit every single day. Uh, of course, we were young, a lot younger back then, but I was just blown away by this guy. Everybody's got one of these. No, just we don't. Face. Just pick the volume. <laughs> but I want one of those. All the way up and run the game back. how to do that and just get <laughs> oh by the way that's just a little thing about how to do that okay <laughs> uh whatever so yeah that's that uh so i'm gonna do some um let's uh do some stories for the week because it's been a pretty another bizarro week in the land of true crime and everything else so let's uh so um, we have a case um, let's see I haven't really been following this one too much because it's just I don't I don't really like to uh, follow the court cases too much I mean because um, It's just, you know. So this is um, what I'm going to uh, do now is uh, the Leticia Staunch trial here. She's accused of, I believe, murdering her stepson. And this has been the talk of the town um the past few weeks you know it's what everybody's been jumping on board like i said i don't really like to cover the trials too much because um it comes down to a jury really it, it's um but in my opinion she's pretty uh guilty but you know So we're going to uh, see if we can find
Let's do this one. Your news starts right now. It's now been two and a half years since the disappearance and subsequent murder investigation surrounding Gannon Stout. What followed has been a courtroom saga filled with ups and downs for the boy's stepmother. But today, big news from the state hospital is bringing Letitia Stout one possible step closer to trial. Good evening, I'm Bart Bedsall. And I'm Heather Skoll, the El Paso County stepmother accused of killing 11 year So this is from K-R-D-O News Channel 13. So this is out west somewhere. Old Gannon Stauk was deemed sane today in court. However, Letitia Stauk's attorneys are now asking for yet another mental evaluation. Investigative reporter Dan Beatty was in that courtroom today. He is live outside the El Paso County Courthouse tonight with the results of that long-awaited sanity evaluation. Dan? Yeah, Heather Bart, after months of waiting, it was revealed at today. It's almost my luck that I would be a news reporter on location, probably the biggest day of my life, and have everything all set up, nice shirt, nice tie, all of this stuff going for me and then all of a sudden as soon as they switch to me there's church bells going off in the back today's status conference that state psychologist down in pueblo deemed Leticia stauk to be sane gannon's family was present inside of the el paso county courtroom stauk. after flying over from south carolina anticipating that the judge would set a firm trial date but that didn't happen for the first time in months, Letitia Stauk, the woman accused of killing her stepson Gannon, was back in the El Paso County Courthouse today. Investigators believe Stauk killed Gannon in his bedroom at their Lorson Ranch home before putting his body in a suitcase, driving to Florida and dumping oh, it. She put, she put the body in a suitcase. Remains off the side of a bridge. Earlier this year, Stauk pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Her defense argued she wasn't sane at the time of Gannon's death. Why would that matter? Judge Thomas Gregory wanted to set a trial date immediately after she was deemed sane, but the defense is now challenging those results. Stout's defense is now obtaining and paying for a qualified individual to conduct a second evaluation. This will be the fourth mental health evaluation for Letitia. Yeah, let's evaluate her until we get the right, you know, the right answer for us. You know, I mean, how many? So far. She was previously tested twice for her competency or ability to understand what's going on in the courtroom. She was deemed competent for both of those tests. All of the findings from the second sanity evaluation must be handed over to the district attorney's office. But so this is, I don't know when this was, this was uh, a while back, seven months ago. So I'm kind of behind the times here, but is going to take Did you a good morning live outside the El Paso County Courthouse. No, Dan, Dan, what's going on. Investigates. Dan, thank you for that update tonight. A 16 year old Colorado. So that's that case that's been going on in her or her case has been in all over the place as far as um, true crime goes. She's uh, like I said, I, I think she's pretty guilty. They think she's pretty guilty. They just think she's crazy and uh, I do too but I don't understand why that would be a problem let's go to uh, this case here uh, the Delphi case we have some <sighs> news that's been going on in that um, A little bit more familiar with the Delphi case because that's all I've been covering. Uh, but uh, if you don't know about this case, look up on it. Uh, I can give you a brief description, but it um, happened in 2017, February 13th. Uh, two girls went for a walk. Uh, fast forward, uh, six years later, they finally arrested somebody. Uh, and his name is Richard Allen. And he's been in... Uh, the prison system now waiting trial for the better part of five and a half months. And uh, the defense came out last week and said that he's, he's gone loony. So they want him moved to another facility. And uh, 
So that's what's been going on. So the judge, I think, ruled kind of on that today. I'm not sure, but uh, they're keeping everything secret. Everything's been sealed, so it's not like we can get any information on what's going on. But um, in my opinion, they're probably going to move him because, uh, you know, you just want to keep this guy sane and alive until he gets to trial so nobody has to um, go through any... Uh, the judge in the Delphi murders case says suspect Richard Allen can be moved out of the yeah, massive justice for the family. So, you know, hopefully this guy can get the, to um, to a trial. And I'm in a minority, but I don't think uh, Kagan Klein has anything to do with it. So I'm going to be coming out with a video pretty soon about it anyways, about the top five reasons why I don't think Kagan Klein's involved. But uh, that's for another day. So here is... Uh, this is WTHR out of uh, Indiana. And the breaking news alert here, this was done eight hours ago. The security unit where he's been staying to a new facility. It's been about a week now since Richard Allen's attorney made that request. The motion included a new picture of Allen behind bars. Now it stated he was being treated. This guy right here, in my opinion, is psychotic. He is right now um completely in a de state of denial that you can't get out of and he's basically doing this as a part of control here he doesn't think he did anything wrong he doesn't know why he's in jail uh and if they don't be careful this guy will not make it to trial treated less favorably than a convicted criminal at the Westville Correction Facility. And it said his physical condition was deteriorating fast because of it. Richard Allen is accused tonight of killing Abby Williams and Libby German in the Delphi murders. He'll now be moved to another facility to accommodate his medical and physical needs within the Department of Correction. But we don't know yet when and where he'll be moved. So that's that. Um, he's probably going to get moved. Um, I wouldn't doubt it. But again, this case has been really secret of the law enforcement and prosecutor. There's a gag order in this, so it's not like anybody can look into it too much. There's, there's nothing to really report except for this. And this was actually leaked wrong by the prosecution. So everybody's been saying, oh, the defense is trying to do this and the defense is trying to do that. Well, it was the prosecution that leaked this. So if it wasn't for that, nobody would know about this. So blame the prosecution, not the defense. Anyways, that's the case there. Um, he has a hearing uh, coming up June 15th, I think, of this year. We'll see if that's going to be moved, obviously. <laughs> so that's going on in Delphi. Uh, what else? <coughs> Uh, let's see here. That's about it. I mean, with the true crime community, there's other stuff going on. We had the Louisville mass shootings. Um, let's do that. Funerals. So this is uh, this is a really horrible case. Yeah, this is. Um, it's just really awful that the mom is, you know, I, not like I want to feel bad for, for this whole situation when it comes to the, uh, the suspect side, but, you know, you can tell from the 911 call that the mom made that she was beside herself, so services held today including from, uh, for tommy elliott his daughter whas 11 
Whitehurst braved the microphone to honor their father taken by gun violence. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen has that story. He's live with photojournalist Ian Hardwit at the downtown memorial tonight. Connor. Isaiah, we're hearing a lot of messages tonight, but I want to emphasize tonight's message is less words and more names. Let's take a look right now. I want to reiterate Dina Eckert, Josh Barrick, Juliana Farmer. It just sucks. It's just awful. You know. Jim Tut and, of course, Tommy Elliott. As the week draws to a close, marking the end to one of our city's darkest chapters. You go through the disbelief and then it settles in. The gravity of Monday's tragedy sets in as people remember the immeasurable loss of life. Jim Tut, Josh Barrick, Juliana Farmer, Dina Eckert, and Tommy Elliott. We, yeah. we miss him and this is very tragic. The community is still coping, gathered inside Broadway Baptist Church Friday to grapple with the goodbye they didn't expect to come so soon. He is a friend. He's more than a broker and a banker. Honoring not just a man, how great of a husband and father he was, but a true cornerstone of our city. He went above and beyond because he believes in community. Tommy Elliott served as senior vice president at Louisville's Old National Bank branch. An Elizabethtown native, he spent his life giving back. So apparently this guy here... Uh, supposed to be working at this bank and he got let go. Um, I'm not sure. But from the mom uh, that called in. Championing various no causes for sure. the American Heart Association, but, Goodwill Industries, Wait. KET, and so much more. Those gathered inside here today that Tommy Elliott Best described him as everyone's best friend, said he would make you feel like the most important person in the room, which is why it should come as no surprise to see the outpouring of support we're seeing here today. You could barely find a parking spot for the service. It's just the way it would, you would expect it to be. I believe this church holds 600 plus folks and we have people at the top. They, they are here to honor Tommy. He deserves it all. Those in attendance ranged from Kentucky's top leaders, Governor Andy Bashir, Congressman Morgan McGarvey, and former Congressman John Yarmouth, to his family, who he loved. Awful. Tommy was our rock and he was always there and his love can't go anywhere but here. The reality of a world without Tommy in it. It was like somebody knocked the wind out of me. You go through that period of shock, but he will live on with that ever permeating smile. The smile that beyond, um, I will take that with me. And a name now forever etched in our city's history. And you're looking at that name right now. We want to reiterate, we were there at the memorial today, really just such a beautiful service, as were all of those held today in Louisville. Now, if you want to help Tommy Elliott's family, <laughs> they ask in lieu of giving them donations that you donate to the American Heart Association. We're live in downtown Louisville. Connor Steffen, the WHAS 1119. Connor, thank you so much. Now, it was a somber afternoon this afternoon, excuse me, inside of Northside Christian Church in New Albany for Dina Eckert's funeral. But it's also bright. Dina's spirit shining on her family tells us Dina worked at Old National Bank as an executive administrative officer. And while she cared deeply for her coworkers, nothing was more important to her than her family. Her husband of 28 years, Mike, and two children. Ben this is terrible, 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 terrible. So that's, that's the scoop there. Um, that's it. Uh, I've been on here probably for about an hour now, so I think it's good. Uh, I'll be back next week. Uh, hopefully, I'll have some guests next week. Uh, my son, maybe, maybe my sister. Um, and um, we'll go over the cases again for the week. But until then, if anybody watched, thank you. If you didn't, okay, that's fine too. Um, my name is Dave. Uh, this is Night Watch. Everybody have a good week. Thank you. Stay safe.